and welcome back to the final video on the series about World War II. In the last video, we talked about the home front, which was a, a big issue, of course. Um, well, it wasn't necessarily an issue, but it was something that happened that was really important to discuss. And, and today, what we're going to do is finish the lesson off with talking about some of the after effects of what happened uh, due to the war. Uh, and the first what we're going to start out with is um, the relations between nations after World War II. In, in Europe, there was, after the Yalta Conference, the Conference of Yalta, Stalin began to retreat away from the rest of the Allies. So he started to become more isolationist, and there was no really real agreement set up to split the state of Germany or the city of Berlin. So one thing that happened was specifically was the state of Germany was split in two. There was East Germany and West Germany, and the city of Berlin was actually split in four, um, a, a a piece of the city for the Americans, for the British, the French, and then the, the Soviet Union. And really what happened was that the West was unable to negotiate with Stalin and because there was so much fear of the spread of communism that the West really wanted to kind of debilitate Stalin in the East. And I mean, understandably so, Stalin is usually considered one of history's greatest monsters. His his under his rule, the Soviet Union killed millions and millions of civilians and um, caused great purges of of political dissenters. So, you know, the West had some legitimate claims to being afraid of Stalin. But in general, because of this inability to even negotiate with them, um, there was this huge split that divided. And it really prepares us for this concept called the Cold War. And, and this happens almost immediately after World War II between the United States and the Soviet Union, which remained the only two superpowers after this great war. Uh, another huge issue that uh, is, is essentially hit almost every time anyone talks about World War II is the concept of genocide. And the most um, infamous genocide was the, the Holocaust. Now, the Holocaust, it, it essentially occurred in Germany from about 1935 to 1945, around there. It actually killed at least 6 million Jews. Now, you've probably had a, a Holocaust class in, a, in, a, in another class, so this is basically just giving a general overview. Uh, there is a nice little video down here uh, that talks about the Holocaust. So the Nazis were very anti-Semitic, obviously, with Mein Kampf. Hitler blamed a lot of the issues with Germany on the Jews. And the Soviets also disliked the Jewish population. The, the, the Soviets and the, the Russians for a long time before 1935 would kick Jews out or wipe Jew, Jewish cities or towns off the face of the face of Russia. I mean, this was the, the Jews were a much hated people in in Europe for a very, very long time. And only today do you really see the sort of the the iron being cooled on that one. And that has to do with this this awful occurrence of the, the Holocaust. So then the Nazis slowly established dominance over the Jewish population. And it all kind of started with it's it's a event. It's called Kristallnacht. And I didn't put it on here. It happens in 1936. Uh, Kristallnacht is sort of like the inciting incident that many people think of when they when they think about uh, the Holocaust. It was a destruction of, of Jewish businesses and homes and such. And it was really the, the first part of what, what is known as the Final Solution, which was developed in about 1942. Um, which was created a series of concentration camps for Jews, homosexuals, mentally handicapped, political prisoners, and and whoever the Nazis really wanted to get rid of. Uh, I mean, so many individuals uh, were were sentenced to death uh, uh, at these concentration camps. Uh, the most famous being the one in Auschwitz, which was used most famously for the Jews. Now, Auschwitz, of course, being the concentration camp that more Jews died at than any other concentration camp in World War II. And, and here's just kind of like a mass grave of a concentration camp. You can see the, the onlookers. These look like generals over here. Um, basically, uh, this video down here also sort of goes into um, American and, and Soviet generals would 
would liberate these concentration camps as as they would uh, were invading inside Germany. And what would happen is is the soldiers would would take the members of the town in Germany, march them to the concentration camp, and make them look at the destruction, the mass graves, and, and things. So sort of, it, it was a really eye-opening and, and awful part of the history of Germany was this, this period of the Holocaust. It were everyday average people who really really had no want to kill jews but that's what the government was doing and they didn't want to be um you know taken out back and shot themselves so they kind of went along with it and there were some you know mild supporters or and major supporters but they all had to watch and see these 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 dead folks which was just an awful awful occurrence and here too you could see that um, in the period of time between 1933 and 1940, that the, the emigration from Germany of Jewish people was, was just massive. Um, you, you have 90,000 people that actually moved to the United States. Um, 83,000 move all over South America. Uh, is about 18,000 moved to Shanghai, and a, a few moved to Palestine. Actually, a good portion. It's about 60,000. And, you know, you have uh, Jews that moved to other states as well. But, of course, um, France and Belgium and the Netherlands, they would all be taken over very, very soon. So they, they didn't necessarily... Um, didn't necessarily end up well. And not only was the Holocaust a huge issue, but you also had, and we talked about this before, Stalin's Great Purge. And this is a wonderful video created by Russia Today, which is actually the Russia state media. So, you know, you can you can pretty much trust it, but the, the, the Russians, even today, are not known for their... their um, their freedom of the press, but it gives a good overview of, of some of the, the aspects of, of the Great Purge and, and millions of people that, that Joseph Stalin killed. And the most um, notable piece of work about the Holocaust, we'll go back to the Holocaust for a sec, uh, was Eli Wiesel's uh, Night, which is a novel based on his experience at Auschwitz and other concentration camps. So genocide, uh, I mean, just a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to happen to a anyone. And it's, it's so sad to see that, you know, even today that you know, people would still do these kind of things to other individuals. It really came to a head here. And another really important aspect is this idea of total war. You know, most experts think that the approximate death count for the war was 60 million people. Now, we have 7 billion people today, but and think about how destructive a war, a world war would be today and how many people would die, would die. But 60 million people, that is the most deaths in any war ever. Roughly 20 million soldiers died, but look at this, almost a double amount of civilians died. And, and most importantly, so that the Soviet Union, Japan, China, France, Germany, Italy, they are the most heavily impacted uh, countries with the war t with war torn environments. And even countries like uh, Britain and Finland and Holland have sustained a fair, a fair portion of damage as well. And, and many nations would need to rebuild their basic infrastructure in 1945. And, and you have two nations, as we were talking about before, that were left essentially um, well, one nation, I should say, that was essentially left unharmed, and that was the United States, which it turned out that in, during the Cold War, when, when, when we go over more of the United States, the, the, there's almost no competition. The United States has pretty much reign to make as many goods as they want, so wartime production would continue at about the same rate because the United States would be the only player providing uh, economic relief and support for European nations and, and, and places like Japan and that were allied to the United States after the war. And, and more importantly, too, is that even that even the soldiers that when they came home from the United States, they would they would face you know, stress and anxiety, just like today's veterans. They would come home with uh, post-traumatic st stress syndrome, though they didn't they didn't call it that back then. But that's that's what it was. And, and other things. And, and this this is a clip from a movie, The Best Years of Our Lives, written in uh, 1946. And it was the winner of the Academy Osc or the Academy Award that year, the Oscar. And, and here is just a video, too, about just what total war does and covering some of the basic aspects of World War II and the, the aftermaths. And, and let's just take a look at this. This is a nice little chart I found of the amount of people that died during the war. So you could see here that, you know, the, the Allied military you had about 25% 
of their military was was or 25 percent of all the deaths were allied military but over 58 percent of the people that died roughly half were known were allied civilians places like poland i mean literally 10 million deaths in poland uh more than that almost 20 million deaths in poland for um the civilians uh more than 12 m million deaths for the soviet union uh, Lithuania would have, look at this, 14 million deaths in Lithuania. And, and look, look, look at the forces. Look at the, look at the military forces. Oh, I, oh, I have, oh, oh no, oh dear. Oh dear. These are the, um, I apologize. The, the, the blue would be the, the total deaths as of, as per population. Ooh, I have to go back. And, and Poland, I mean, you have... Uh, roughly 18 percent of the population is is just is just murdered um in the soviet union you could see that the military deaths are in the red so you have almost 10 million members of the military in the soviet union dead and, and the civilians are just way way more uh in in china look the amount of civilian deaths in china I mean, and that's just, you know, a, a little under five or six percent of the population in China. But even in Lithuania, look at the civilian deaths in Lithuania. There might be uh, one or two million, but that was 15 um, percent of the population. And you go down to Germany, too, and there's there's, you know, four or five million military deaths and around two or th two million civilian deaths. And and that's still about 10 percent of the population. So a lot of these countries are just facing Oh, complete devastation and look at the united states the united states doesn't have almost has almost no civilian deaths which is is very striking and the united kingdom too has about about the same too uh not a lot of civilian deaths but uh, more than the united states and uh, the graph only shows a little bit in japan you see too you have you know millions of deaths for the the japanese so there's just so much carnage that happened during the war and it's really you know oh it's so crazy to see and, and the last topic i want to cover is this idea of atomic power and this kind of ties everything together with the with the manhattan project and everything the effects of the atomic bomb were felt all over the world. There wasn't a single person that wasn't affected by the radiation of the drop of the atomic bomb. And in subsequent tests afterwards, the Soviet Union would actually test their first atomic bomb in 1949. So it was a huge breach of security for the United States, who had the secrets to make it. Um, German and, and Soviet scientists would, would actually do a lot of sleuthing on their own and spies actually got the information out of the united states and, and this would actually provide an arms race and, and as we go into if we were going to go into the cold war we'd see a this huge arm race and a proverbial standoff between uh the west with the united states and the east with the soviet union and, and nuclear energy and nuclear power became a, a reality and is still reality uh to many americans um, both good and bad. Not only do we can we get electricity from it, but nuclear energy can destroy the planet, or at least the people that are living on it. And this is a nice little video showing some um, some of the devastation that could be caused by nuclear weapons and things like that. So, in in over in an overview of, of just the the aftermath, I mean, so many just just horrendous things because of the war and going into the cold war too so the world war ii is just kind of like this 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 middle war period between uh, we were talking about the the great depression before which was a huge aspect of the of the origins and going into the aftermath which is the uh the cold war so that's that's the lesson on world war ii um you have the origins, the war, the home front, and the aftermath, and we went over all of these things. So I, I hope that gives you a better understanding of the conflict. And if there are any suggestions, please let me know. And uh, uh, thanks so much for being. Thanks so much for uh, for watching the video. Have a great rest of the day. And welcome back to the final video on the series about World War II. In the last video, we talked about the home front, which was a, a big issue, of course. Um, well, it wasn't necessarily an issue, but it was something that happened 
that is really important to discuss. And today what we're going to do is finish the lesson off with talking about some of the after effects of what happened uh, due to the war. Uh, and the first one we're going to start out with is um, the relations between nations after World War II. In, in Europe, there was, after the Yalta Conference, the Conference of Yalta, Stalin began to retreat away from the rest of the Allies, so he started to become more isolationists, and there was no really real agreement set up because there was so much fear of the spread of communism that the West really wanted to kind of debilitate Stalin in the East, and, I mean, understandably so, Stalin is usually considered one of history's greatest monsters his his under his rule the soviet union killed millions and millions of civilians and um caused great purges of of political dissent to split the state of germany or the city of berlin so one thing that happened was specifically was the state of germany was split in two there was east germany and west germany and the city of berlin was actually split in four um a a a piece of the city for the Americans, for the British, the French, and then the, the Soviet Union. And really what happened was that the West was unable to negotiate with Stalin. And so, you know, the West had some legitimate claims to being afraid of Stalin. But in general, because of this inability to even negotiate with them, um, there was this huge split that divided. And it really prepares us for this concept called the Cold War. And, and this happens almost immediately after World War II between the United States and the Soviet Union, which remain the only two superpowers after.